uh, welcome to my classroom today another topic under the chapter soil architecture we will discuss soil crusting and its management in fact soil crust is it is basically i should say semi permeable layer formed at the surface of the soil which is dense means it's compact it's high bulk density and is characterized by low porosity low total porosity as well as low macro porosity so it it will be a high density low porosity layer at the surface of the soil what we call as soil crusting basically soil crusting is very important phenomenon because in many soils rather it should be a, a, a we can call this as a, a, you know a property of the soil a characteristic of the soil soil crusting phenomenon is more dominant in coarse and medium textured soils and it is important from agriculture point of view because of the two reasons once that supposing a farmer has sown his field with a certain crop and immediately after sowing there is heavy rainfall so if it's a coarse and medium textured soil field then of course there will be formation of a crust and once the crust is formed the germination will not be there so better call it as impaired germination and many a times the farmers they have to plow back their field because they know that the seedlings would come out because this is high density low porosity layer and when we say low porosity it means uh, and less permeable also when we say less permeable high density low porosity less permeable layer means it is permeable to both water and air water cannot uh, infiltrate easily into the soil similarly there won't be any there would be uh, i should say there will be very low exchange of air between the atmosphere and the soil and you know that that also hampers germination so germination is hampered by the two things uh, air and water permeability and secondly it is all it, it also depends uh, leads to uh the force i should say high force of penetration the seedlings in fact for the seedlings in fact the seedlings they don't have uh, so much of force so that they may penetrate out of this crust which is high density and that's with more strength so that's why the germination is impaired and number two because of the low permeability water permeability i should say it uh, reduces infiltration rate of water into the soil and and you know when less water infiltrates into the soil we can expect more runoff so runoff it increases so these are i should say two major impacts of uh, soil crusting from agriculture point of view one is germination is impaired because there is very low you know exchange of gases between atmosphere and the soil which is must for the seed to germinate number one and if somehow the crust formation forms after 2 3 days seed has already germinated but the seedlings cannot come out 
because of the high force of penetration seedlings do not have such a force to break down the earth and then come out of to break down this crust and come out of the soil now uh, what should be the properties of crust what are in fact the properties of the crust some properties i have already shown uh, in the definition so one is the bulk density of crust is high that's why we say high density so bulk density of the crust layer that is very high secondly infiltration rate is low of course but that's a phenomenon that's not a characteristic of the soil then there is reduced total volume because this layer becomes compact so total volume of the soil gets reduced and there is reduced macro porosity rather i should say there is reduced porosity of the soil total porosity this crust crust layer it can be less than 1 mm to up to 10 mm or 1 cm 10 mm in thickness and the one the crust which is uh, you know less than 1 mm thickness we call this as clay skin better you call it as skin seal many many people also call it as clay seal also or clay skin also and uh, when i said that uh, yes there is decrease in porosity it is up to the extent of 30 to 90% reduction in porosity so porosity of this particular layer can decrease up to the extent of 90% that's why this crust layer becomes less permeable to air less permeable to water that's why there is a dearth of i should say oxygen in the soil resulting in reduced germination as well as there is reduced infiltration rate of water into the soil when i said the bulk density is high but at the same time the texture of that crust layer and the soil below that's almost similar we, uh, i should not say that crust varies to a great extent then another property is that this crust layer can be single or multi layer for example uh, the multi layer uh, the best example is the clay layer or the crust layer which is formed in a puddled paddy field you can very easily observe it at, uh, at the time of crop harvesting so at the top there will be clay layer and when you will take it you take it out at the bottom you can see the sand particles so what happens in fact it's a multi layer you know crust uh, when you puddle the soil you churn the soil we actually are breaking down the aggregates slaking takes place and then the primary particles sand particles being habeas they settle first followed by silt particles and ultimately the last clay particles settle and they form a clay skin so that clay skin in fact uh, because of its reduced infiltration reduced permeability it helps water to stagnate at the pad in the paddy fields which is uh, quite important for the paddy or rice plants so th this multi layer is also we call it as uh, sedimentary sedimentary crust because uh, it, it is formed uh, due to the process of sedimentation settling of sand then silt and then clay forming a multi layer crust so in so in otherwise uh, in non paddy fields the crust formed after the rainfall that is 
mostly it is single layer crust now we will see uh, what, what are the types of crust the crust can be of different types So when we said, uh, discuss types of crust, so it means a sort of dense, low permeability layer at the surface of the soil. So first type could be the chemical crust. If the soils are saline or sodic, so generally uh, in uh, during dry periods and particularly in semi-arid and arid regions you can see a layer of salt present at the surface if that layer is of white color it is mainly because of the salinity uh, saline soils and if uh, the color of that chemical uh, you know layer is black then we call it is uh, we, we can recognize that the soils here are of sodic type of soils because uh, the organic matter gets uh, you know dissolved and uh, in the sodium ions it results in the formation of a black layer black crust at the soil surface so the that's why we call this as chemical crust so chemical crust has nothing to do with the raindrop impact or the breakdown of aggregates it's only you know a formation of a layer of salts at the surface and the dominant salts, they, it depends upon whether it's a saline soil or it's a sodic soil. Then we have <coughs> biological crust. As the name says, biological crust. This is, this is uh, in fact, the process of formation of a layer of, you know, algal layer. Generally, it's an algal layer, and you can also call it as microbiological layer. Biological layer, which is formed at the surface of the soil, and you know when the soil remains wet for most of the time, a green layer is formed at the surface. That is because of the algae, and you know the algae is a microorganism. So this algal growth, this uh, results in the formation of a biological crust. And of course, why we call this as crust? Because this is quite hydrophobic to water. This is hydrophobic layer. So that means uh, it leads to reduced infiltration rate or reduced permeability of the soil surface because of hydrophobic nature of this biological crust. And generally, it, had, uh, it results due to the podding of water at the surface of the soil. Podding of water or continuous due to continuous wetness. So we call this as biological crust. Then third type is the physical crust. Now, physical crust could be of again for the two types. One is depositional. Well, we, we also call this as uh, depositional. And another is uh, here what we call as structural. Now, depositional crust, as the name suggests, it's uh, again because of the deposition of the sediments, you know, runoff uh, coming from one side, when its velocity decreases, then the particles, sediments, which are present in uh, the water, the runoff water, they start settling down, resulting in the formation of clayton. And when this velocity becomes zero, then you can say that most of this uh, deposition crust is basically a clay layer. So that's quite, uh, you know, impermeable or semi-permeable to water. We also call this as sedimentation crust. So if immediately water stops, running water stops at one place, 
then there could be formation of a single layer crust or multi layer crust depending upon whether velocity becomes slow it gets reduced or velocity becomes almost zero so generally you might have seen in the bottom of the lakes you have the clay layers formed at the bottom of the lakes and that is uh, in the lakes the velocity becomes zero but in uh, you know the coastal areas or particularly uh, uh, on the banks of the streams and rivers the velocity of the water becomes slow and generally uh, the sand particles they settle over there uh, maybe at the most sand particle but clay particles they are carried away by the water and they are deposited until the velocity becomes zero so in that case uh, it's a sand layer so whether it's a sand layer whether it's a silt layer or a clay layer that depends upon the velocity of the running water velocity of the run of water so this is called depositional crust then structural crust now structural means alteration of the soil structure now supposing that uh, you have a field which has been freshly cultivated you can imagine that that field will be uh, quite rough like this so here the roughness is quite high okay now when there is uh, uh, immediately after cultivation supposing that uh, there is rain so that rain in fact this rain drop impact it breaks down the aggregates it breaks down the aggregates we call this as disruption so they disrupt the aggregates particularly when the aggregates are weak now how how fast this disruption takes place the process of disruption it depends upon the initial moisture content of the soil the roughness of the soil so we will discuss the factors of crust formation particularly this uh, structural crust formation just now so here just i will say that is its dispersion of the aggregates soil aggregates and of uh, disruption and disperse, dispersion so not only the aggregates are disrupted the smaller particles micro aggregates or if primary particles are there they also start dispersing that again depends upon the you know electrical properties of the soil and uh, disruption and dispersion disruption plus dispersion so it leads to the structural crust and which i said that it has very high bulk density it has low permeability again and low porosity so that's why the seedlings cannot emerge out of this crust so either you will have to break down the crust or go for some other measures or if the crust is too strong then you will have to break down the crust by somehow or even to plow back the field and then re-sow your field otherwise germination will not take place so now uh, i hope the things are clear chemical crust form because it depends upon whether your soil is saline or sodic if your saline is uh, soil is non saline non sodic you cannot expect formation of chemical crust biological crust crust particularly where the soil remains wet for most of the soil time for example paddy fields then you have formation of an algal layer at the surface and since this algal layer is quite hydrophobic so it reduces the infiltration rate so this is how the biological crusts are said to be there and then physical crusts are two types one could be depositional where, where the layer single layer or multi layer crust is formed because of deposition of sediments brought by the run of water from one place to another place and then uh, another type of physical crust is structural crust where there is breakdown of aggregates where there is dis disruption of aggregates and once the aggregates are dis disrupted they disperse and that dispersion depends upon uh, the electrical properties of the soil these dispersed particles they settle in between micro aggregates they seal the surface of the soil and because of compaction and compression the, the there is formation of 
a hard layer, a high bulk density, low porosity layer, which reduces infiltration rate, which impairs germination of the seed. Now we will see what are the factors affecting, uh, you know, crust formation. Factors of crust formation, or better, I should say, factors affecting crusting. The process of crusting. Well, the first is rainfall. Because uh, the physical, particularly the physical crusts, they are, I should say, out of chemical, biological, the physical crusts are more common. And uh, out of the two physical crusts, that is structural and uh, depositional, again I'll say structural crusts are more common, particularly where the soil aggregates are weak. So, and those are, you know, formed because of the disruption of aggregates, breakdown of aggregates due to rainfall. So, kinetic energy of the rainfall and, you know, kinetic energy depends upon the drop size. Rain drop size. Because it is one half mv scale. So, M determines the velocity, the bigger the dia, more will be the, the falling velocity of the raindrops. And you know it's basically the terminal velocity. That means when raindrops starts falling with a constant velocity, it uh, the velocity no more accelerates. And uh, for a drop size of 5 millimeter, this terminal velocity is 9 meters per second. So for a drop size of 5 millimeter, the terminal velocity is 9 meter per second. So kinetic energy plus, uh, you know, mass of raindrop. So this uh, leads to momentum. So again, the momentum depends upon kinetic energy and uh, raindrop mass. So this momentum of the rain, it breaks down the aggregates. So now I should say the formation of crust is a direct function of, uh, you know, what we call as rain intensity. So higher the rain intensity, more will be the crusting. Higher will be crusting. And you know why? Because of uh, greater disruption, uh, faster disruption of aggregates and dispersion of the particles. Uh, then the rain water which is, reaches the ground, it, it impacts the aggregates with its kinetic energy then most of the rain water it starts flowing. So that flowing rain water has a gain kinetic energy. So flowing rain water kinetic energy. And uh, particularly if your field is not zero level, the, it's a bit slopey, then the rain, uh, this uh, flowing water, it has certain kinetic energy, its velocity will be higher. So flowing rain water, better call it as runoff water. So it has higher kinetic energy and again, it leads to higher crusting. And here, particularly uh, because of the higher kinetic energy, it will break down the aggregates. It will also carry the soil particles along with it and deposit somewhere. So resulting in the formation of depositional crust. So here uh, rainfall has two effects. One is formation of structure crust, break, direct breakdown of aggregates. And second is flowing rainwater kinetic energy, which uh, uh, detaches the soil particles, also carries the soil particles from one place to another place and uh, these particles are then deposited at certain places resulting in the formation of deposition crust. So, <coughs> and this uh, strength of the crust will be higher if immediately after the rainfall, the weather becomes hot and dry. If weather becomes hot and dry, there is easy desiccation. So, because of the easy desiccation, there will be hard setting of the particles resulting in the crust formation and once the crust is formed 
then it's very e difficult uh, for the seeds to germinate out of the soil. So this is how rainfall affects crusting. Another is soil properties because it's a basically crusting is, you know, <coughs> a phenomenon which depends upon the properties of the soil. Basically, we call this crusting as a property of the soil because some soils are more prone to crusting than others. So generally, uh, I should say the first factor is texture. And here I'll say that coarse and medium textured soils. are more prone to crusting. Rather, I should say the fine textured soils, they are not prone to crusting. It's very difficult to break down the aggregates of, uh, you know, finer textured soil because clay to clay cementation is uh, very important in the formation of aggregates. So here, uh, in coarse and medium textured soil, since clay content is less, so cementation is less, that's why the aggregates are weaker and uh, it's easy to break down these aggregates. That's why in such soils, coarse and medium textured soils, the crust formation is low. Then uh, again, soil organic carbon. This is also very fair. Now, supposing you have two soils, both are, uh, say, sandy low, coming in this category, medium texture. So both have the same amount of clay content, but the soil with high amount of soil organic carbon, the crusting will be low. So soil organic carbon, if it is high, this will lead to lower crusting. So this is again an important property which uh, determines the extent of crusting in the soil. Third is then, I think I should uh, rub it and, okay. <coughs> So third property under this uh, is your clay mineralogy. That is also very important, Mineral, mineralogy. As I said that crusting is basically disruption and then dispersion. Disruption is breakdown of aggregates and then the dispersion means repulsive forces between uh, you know the primary particles and that depends upon the clay mineralogy. So here I should say expanding type of clays. Expanding type of clays are more prone to crusting. Because you know expanding type of clays for example two is to one type of clays. So they, they easily expand water enters into, you know, the two layers of these minerals and uh, uh, what you call as interlattice space. So which results in, uh, you know, the slaking of uh, the part aggregates and uh, the aggregates, they immediately break down. Uh, whereas uh, one is to one type of non-expanding type of clays, they don't expand they don't get wet very easily, water cannot enter into the interlattice space, so that's why they are less prone to crusting. So here I should say the median aggregate, uh, median rock dia uh, or uh, mean weight diameter, mean weight diameter, you know, this is a very important indicator of uh, the structure of the soil. So higher the mean weight uh, means the, the soil has more proportion of uh, water stable aggregates. So if it is higher and again D50, <coughs> D50 of the stable aggregates. So that means D50 is median dia. If I say uh, D50 is X millimeter, so that means 50% uh, of the aggregates they have dia less than this and 50% of the aggregates they have dia more than this. So higher the value of uh, D50, higher the value of mean weight diameter, so there will be less crusting. So these were, uh, and uh, yes, moisture content. The, so next factor is the moisture content. Soil moisture content, better I should call it as incident moisture content. So if you 
moisture initially the soil is less uh, soil moisture is less initially the soil is dry then of course uh, whatever the water comes either through rainfall or through runoff it will result in slaking of soil particles slaking you know it's a process when water immediately enters into the dry particles and uh, the dry aggregates and the air which is present in the aggregates it tries to rush out so when it tries to rush out it explodes it causes a minor explosion slaking i should say minor explosion so when there is minor explosion due to rushing out of the air out of the aggregates there is breakdown of aggregates so this is how then due to slaking the aggregates get breakdown particularly when the soil is initially uh, dry and if you saw a moisture content theta is higher incident moisture content is higher then there will be you know the kinetic energy of rain it will lead to disruption of the particles because you know the wetter aggregates the wetter soil it becomes weaker water enters into the uh, again you say intra intra aggregate spaces so then uh, the aggregates they become weaker it becomes easy for uh, you know the rain drops to break down the aggregate so here the kinetic energy of rain drop i should say it leads to high disruption of the particles breakdown of the aggregates so two things are there one is if initially it's dry then the rain water or run of water it will lead to slaking and slaking means uh, minor explosions air gushing out and breaking down the aggregates but if it's otherwise it's wet soil and then it the aggregates will become weaker uh, kinetic energy is mostly it is used to break down the aggregates then uh, micro leaf conditions of the soil another factor that means before the rainfall what is the micro leaf of soil or simply you can say the roughness and just now i told you that roughness or cloudiness so rougher the soil or cloudier the soil then it will be less uh, you know lead to less prone to crusting but again then it will depend upon whether this rough clods rough surface of the soil whether initially soil moisture is higher or or it's low so whether slaking dominates or whether uh, you know kinetic energy dominates or maybe either of the two do not dominate so so it's it's not the effect of individual factor it's then it becomes the effect of collective effect of you know all the factors micro leaf incident moisture content type of the soil then uh, kinetic energy of the rainfall all these factors they determine the, you know the formation of uh, the crust now a little bit about the mechanism of crust formation how the crust are formed that this crusting is basically disruption and dispersion these two are very important you know processes one is disruption so disruption it could be because of yes first of all tillage even if you are continuously or uh, telling the soil to a large extent to a greater extent you are breaking down bigger aggregates into smaller aggregates you are converting micro aggregates into micro aggregates so this tillage is also that how and again when you are continuously telling the soil or you are intensively telling the soil then you know that leads to exposure of soil organic carbon present in 
the interaggregate space is present in the, the aggregates itself so there is you know more uh, microbial activity and uh, there is decrease in organic matter so that's why we say that when you go for conservation tillage you are basically increasing soil organic matter so when you go for intensive tillage you are decreasing the soil organic matter and you already know how soil organic matter it helps in making the aggregates strong it helps in binding the soil particles so that uh, the slaking or even uh, the kinetic energy of the raindrop is not able to break down the aggregates to that extent which we expect otherwise so one is tillage which causes disruption then of course uh, rain intensity that's what call is as kinetic energy of rain and then also the kinetic energy of flowing water so these are some of the forces which disrupt the soil which break down the aggregates and then after this disruption then there is dispersion that means once the aggregates they are converted into primary particles the primary particles even they disperse each other if the the dispersion is more then the formation of crust will be more if dispersion after the di disruption the particles do not disperse then flocculation is there then i'll say again that uh, there are little chances of formation of soil crust so for soil crusting to be there both disruption and then dispersion of the soil primary soil particles that's very important and this disruption you know it depends on uh, the charge distribution on soil collides Uh, they they could have a permanent charge. Permanent is your uh, like two is to one or one is to one, or variable charge. Variable charge is due to you know uh, amorphous minerals. then soil it could be soil organic matter because soil organic matter is also a dynamic you know property and it may decrease or increase so so this is that's why we call this as variable charge and then uh, some oxides also so these the, the charge distribution it uh, it determines whether uh, these uh, you know uh, which which type of charge is there now supposing you have uh, we say that low activity clays low activity clays these are uh, more prone to dispersion then because as i said that uh, uh, low activity clays means uh, where even if the water or uh, these are not uh, you know susceptible to slaking or all that so this is this is uh, how it determines and then similarly with soils with uh, low concentration of uh, soil organic matter they, these are again more prone to crust prone to dispersion then there is uh, properties of the double layer diffuse double layer and these uh, double layer for example uh, you have for the, the basically the thickness of the double layer it determines the dispersion force between the particles so this this again depends on the nature of cations for example here the sodium monovalent cation like sodium now we know that if the sodium is dominating the you know the colloidal particles then uh, there is more disruption and if you remember in mechanical analysis of the soil to cause dispersion among the soil particles we we had added sodium uh, uh, sodium hydroxide so this this results in dispersion of the particles but again uh, 
uh, it depends for the concentration of sodium ions. Then degree of hydration, that's also very important. So this degree of hydration, it again depend, uh, is a function of, you know, the clay mineralogy. Two is to one type of minerals, they, they, the degree of hydration is more. More the degree of hydration, more will be the thrusting. And uh, then there is third effect is, you know, particle repulsion. So ultimately, the particle repulsion, that means they repel each other, it depends on, you know, the clay charge on the soil surface, the type of the clay minerals, then the nature of the cations, degree of hydration, all these things ultimately determine the repulsive forces between the particles we call as particle repulsion. So colloidal stability, so, so ultimately it's the net effect of net effect of water wall forces of attraction and electric double layer repulsion double you know the electric or double layer leads to uh, dispersion of the particles and uh, you know, whatever forces of attraction they lead to flocculation. So which out of these two forces dominate that determines the degree of dispersion. So this is why how the dispersion takes place. Then third you know the step I should say the third process after disruption dispersion is uh, you rearrangement or reorientation of particles this is the closed packing arrangement so uh, particularly uh, just uh, to give an example supposing you have freshly cultivated uh, loamy sand soil or coarse or medium textured soil and you irrigate it. After irrigation, your soil becomes less rough or it becomes more smooth. Why it happens? And if you make it the bulk density before and after, the bulk density increases. Which bulk density? Dry bulk density. So, uh, you know, dry bulk density is uh, devoid of the moisture content. So why after irrigation the bulk density increases? Or why after soil becoming wet the bulk density increases? It is because of the reorientation of the particles. Supposedly the two particles, this and this, earlier they were reorient, they were oriented like this. So because of you know the coming of water in between these two, the the particles they get reoriented like this. So they become they, they reduce the pore space and uh, result in you know what should I call as compaction. So, so a sort of compact structure is formed. So this reorientation, this is again an important uh, you know process in the formation. And after this, it is desiccation. And after uh, reorientation, another one is this is like this compactness. Another is that the primary particles, particularly the clay and cell particles, they move with the infiltrating water. So one is better. I should write over here. One is uh, reorientation. Second is movement of final particles. With infiltrating water. So that also then reduces you know the porosity and the structure becomes more compact the layer becomes more compact and then ultimately desiccation desiccation is drying of you know the clay layer the crust layer which is formed until and unless it dries out completely its strength will not be so strong if if it if you you know the weather is uh, uh, wet and dry wet and dry after rainfall then you may have a weak structure then we need not worry about it then the seedlings they will come out of the soil but if after the rainfall there is hot and dry weather and this gets completely dried up or desiccation 
then the crust becomes, you know, it uh, it becomes harmful uh, with uh, with the, uh, from uh, germination point of view. So desiccation is this uh, this more important. Now, ultimately, how to manage this crust? Just uh, this is uh, some very simple steps. Management of soil crusting. soil crusting two things are there. One is prevention. We have to prevent prevention. Prevention of what? Disruption. If somehow we are able to prevent the disruption of the particles. So how you can do that? First of all, make your aggregate strong. Aggregate stability to be increased. This, this should be our first strategy. And how can we increase aggregate stability? By adding, increasing soil organic matter. Number two, by the use of certain polymers. And soil organic matter increase means adding farmyard manure, then composting, etc. Even crop residues. And then there are certain polymers also. For example, we have PVA, polyvinyl alcohol. If you spray PVA over the surface of the soil, the aggregates uh, they get bound by the carbon particles present in polyvinyl alcohol. So there's a long chain of carbon atoms. So it can also you know strengthen the aggregates. So this is uh, how you can do it. Second is uh, we have to protect our soil. So this will be after pre uh, sorry this uh, prevention. Let me call as uh, protection. So that means. Uh, whether or not you could improve the stability of the aggregates somehow whatever is the soil we have to protect it so we have to protect it from the raindrop so better uh, should say raindrop kinetic energy so you can cover the surface of the soil surface cover it could be because of uh, the crop residue mulching. You spread the crop residues at the surface so that uh, the kinetic energy of the raindrops that is absorbed by uh, this uh, residue mulch. And then you can also use plastic mulch. And you can also go for conservation tillage. When you go for conservation tillage, it's basically reduced tillage with crop residues that retained at the surface. So this conservation tillage, this, get, this gives a double, you know, uh, reduced tillage means you are improving soil organic matter in the soil and uh, you also you are retaining the crop residues at the surface of the soil. So this is how we can cover the surface. Then uh, again protection Yes, third thing is manipulations. It's not the manipulation in the negative sense, but some manipulations, better called as agronomic manipulations. Agronomic manipulation. What are our agronomic manipulations? First of all, once the crust has been formed, better, uh, uh, let me give it a better word, curative. Now once the crust has been formed, you can go for a light irrigation. Even if it's not required by the crop, 
because crop is still not there, the seedlings are still germinating there inside the soil. You give a light irrigation and as I said, when soil becomes or this crust becomes wet, uh, its strength decreases and seedlings can uh, immediately come out of that wet layer. We generally, this is very effective particularly when you have sown the maize uh, seeds. So maize seeds, they, they have uh, greater energy and they can come out, but not out of the dry crust, but wet crust. Then uh, <coughs> you can break down crust, break down by, you know, rotary hoe, rotary harrow, rotary hoe, etc. Better call as rotary hoe. Or simply by a hem. If you are able, uh, you have slimes on the crop, so you can break down that particular portion where the seed is found for a uh, line below. Then, uh, by breaking the crust, you can ensure that the seeds, uh, will, germinating seeds, will come out. Then, uh, another curative measure is uh, dense seeding. Then seeding, the idea is that uh, you increase uh, the quantity of the seed, uh, particular in soils which are prone to crusting. And the idea is that uh, when the seeds, they germinate together, so they can use, uh, you know, united we stand and divided we fall, so that the seeds particularly, if they jointly use the force and they can, they can break down the crust. So some people have given this dense seeding and uh, avoiding deep seeding avoid deep seeding because uh, if you have deep seeding your crop then the seed is lying uh, at a depth and it will take uh, it will use its energy to come at the surface so it will not be left with much of the energy to break down the crust otherwise if it is sown at a shallower depth maybe some of energy may be used to break down the crust the idea is so this is how uh, by preventive, by protective and by curative measures we can manage the crust of the soil. I hope the things will be clear. Thank you very much.